Pentagon is the only agency that cannot produce a budget that can be audited and presented to the American people. Every other agency passes those tests in terms of financial audits. We here at Midpoint always do more than just question everything. We bring in those voices who, like us, seeking more than the hyperbolic media truth, seeking something just a bit deeper, a lot more intelligent, too. Around the Dial gives us a chance to present some of the best and brightest talk radio minds and mouths from across the country. So let's welcome in one of the top-rated syndicated talkers in America, slinging that brand of talk from the studios at KXL Radio in Portland, Oregon, since 1997. Let's welcome Lars Larson from the Lars Larson Show. Yeah. To midpoint and as it's well. a pleasure to be on with you. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. It's okay, Lars. I read it just like you handed it to me, big boy, so it's 25 bucks on the dime. There you go. We're all set to go. Let's hit you on the news items. First of all, I know we want to talk about some military spending here that we just alluded to a second ago in that soundbite. But first, let's get your reaction right now to what's happening in the world. The president comes out, takes his shots at Vladimir Putin, basically saying, what exactly are they trying to hide? There are those on one side who will say the reason that Putin gets away with it is because America does not have strong leadership. Another side says, there's not much he can do in the first place. Where do you stand? Well, I'll tell you something. I didn't think I would ever do this, but I think Samantha Power at the United Nations last week was sounding a whole lot more forceful than President Obama is today. She came out with a full-on indictment of what Russia has done. Russia put the weapons in the hands of these people. It now appears that the missile was either fired from Russian territory or, if we accept the president's version of things, the Russian-made and supplied missile was fired from the Ukraine, and then that missile missile system was apparently withdrawn back across the border. So Russia's got blood on its hands in this case. And what does the president do? Well, we really, really want to get our investigators on the scene as quickly as we can. And, uh, and, and Putin won't facilitate that. This is really a weak response. And I'll tell you how I think we got to here. How we got to here is a president who, before the election two years ago, was promising Putin more flexibility, which he gave him. Then he drew a red line in the sand about Syria that he wasn't prepared to enforce, and Putin saw that, and he acted on it. And then Putin invaded Crime the Crimean Peninsula, and now... Uh, some of Putin's thugs have apparently used Putin's weapons to shoot down a jetliner and take the lives of 298 people. And all the president could say is, would you please let our investigators into the crash scene? The president needs to be a whole lot more forceful than he's being right now. All right, let's get on to what we led to here at the beginning of the hour, right now, beginning of the segment, I, sh I should say. You recently had a guest on your show, Corey Shockey, a research fellow at the Hoover Institute at Stanford University. And she was talking about the U.S. paying for the upkeep of unused bases, the tremendous amount of money that is spent for the military. But she talked about making the military, or running at least, like it's a business. Explain what she had in mind. Well, there are a couple of things about that. The, business, the uh, uh, Pentagon does not run like a business right now. As you pointed out in the introduction, it's not capable of being audited the way we would audit a lot of other agencies. And, Ed, I'll go back a number of years into the Bush administration. We did a radio broadcast for a day from the Pentagon. We had done that a few times during Bush's presidency. And I got a chance to interview a guy by the name of Dove Zakheim. And when I asked him to, to describe what his job was, he said, if we were a corporation, I would be the chief financial officer, the CFO. And he said one of his biggest concerns is that as the CFO, he said we're allowed to move approximately three quarters of one percent of the Pentagon budget. Everything else is specified as to where that money will be spent within the budget. Now, imagine trying to improve the outcomes at a corporation. If out of the entire budget, 99 and a quarter percent of it cannot be changed. It's all written down in stone and only three quarters of one percent can be changed. And that's a lot. Uh, that's an awful lot of what Corey Shockey was talking about. The fact that we have weapon systems that are purchased because of political decisions made on Capitol Hill that benefit the home districts of a lot of members of Congress. They're weapon systems that in many cases the Pentagon says it doesn't want, doesn't need, or can't use, or weapon systems that flat don't work. If you want to have a Pentagon that actually is capable of doing what it needs to do, protecting American security in an era like we're in now, you need something that's fast and nimble and where the weapons and the systems that we buy for the people at the Pentagon and for men and women in uniform are ones that actually work and do the jobs they need them to do. I'm just shocked like everybody else. You were talking there about cronyism and payoffs. I'm, I'm just stunned, actually, well, that you would bring that to the fore. 
<laughs> That's exactly, that is exactly what it is. And we all know that we're told, and in fact, Corey Shockey had a number of specific examples uh, that come from various parts of the country where they say, we're going to keep flying. Ah, we're going to wait and see. See, we're going to keep flying. I'm telling you exactly what happened there is somebody in the military will start a controversy right here. It's a conspiracy. They stopped Lars Larson from talking to us. <laughs> Lars, you're there. Go ahead. You got 30 seconds. Finish that. I want to get one more in here real quick. Because a lot of members of Congress are trying to benefit their own districts, and we get weapon systems we don't need or want. See, that'll teach you now again. Go after the military, Lars. That'll teach us right here. <laughs> All right, let's talk about millennials here. This is an interesting. I want to put some numbers sure. here for people to see because this is really fascinating how many people are living at home anymore. About almost 24% of people aged 25 to 34 live with their parents, grandparents, or both in a new Pew study. That's up from a little under 19% in 2007, just prior to the global financial crisis. 11% in 1980. These are the people that are going to set our fortunes, that are going to run the future here. You, you have to wonder, what, what's going on here? I thought the millennials were supposed to be this, this generation that would be able to overcome all this. No, you know what we have right now, Ed, and this is my read on it. I know, and my, my wife and I know friends who have their 30-year-old kids still living at home. And it's a very nice lifestyle for the kids. They're no longer anxious like I was, and perhaps you were, to get out of the house and start making our own way in the world as quickly as possible, even when that meant taking a drop in our lifestyle, because we weren't living in as nice a house as mom and dad had. My dad was a forest ranger, so his house wasn't much. But what I rented, uh, you know, to when I moved out on my own, wasn't anything compared to what my dad had. So, you know, what you have is millennials who are now encouraged by government policy. Obamacare says stay on mom and dad's insurance till you're 26. And there doesn't seem to be any, you know, any burning desire in a lot of these millennials to get out and start making it happen for themselves. I don't know about you, but I had a burning desire to get out of the house. It was my mom and dad going, when are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> I left when I was 18 years old, and I never spent more than 24 hours in my dad's house ever from that point forward because I wanted to be independent. Exactly. I went back to visit, but I wanted to be independent. Lars, you are always independent indeed. KXO Radio Portland, Oregon, a whole lot more. Lars, pleasure to have you on the show again, my friend. Let's do it again and keep things rolling out west. Thanks very much, Ed. Take care. All right, Lars Larson joining us right here. Around the dial, we do that every week. We bring in some great radio talkers right here on Midpoint. Next hour on Midpoint, a call for the Obama administration to stop focusing on help for illegal immigrants, but to focus back home on what a certain segment of the population really needs. And next up, the lies and cover-up in Ukraine over MH17. It's right here on Midpoint.